In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Marriage sanctifies the privilege of sharing in creative life. It's not an arrangement of convenience, either physical or financial, that can be entered into at will and dissolved at whim. It's a holy agreement between two people, pledged to love each other, trust each other, and face all of life together. It is built of impartable things of the spirit, things like loyalties and memories, imagination, sacrifices, joy, laughter, and tears. Reverence for God and each other must sustain it. There is no relationship which is stronger, yet more delicate, than this union which you have now come to commit yourselves. Please be seated. I'd like to request that everyone either turn down or turn off your cell phones for the remainder of the ceremony, please. And thank you. From Jesus' words that James just read us, repeating, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they're no longer two, but one flesh. Please be seated. Today, those words of Jesus are happening. Mitchell, today you're leaving your father and mother and being united to Samantha, who will be your wife. And today, Samantha, you are being joined to Mitchell, who will be your husband. Jesus considered marriage important, and so did Martin Luther, who maintained that this person you marry today is a gift from God. Now, Luther also said, there is nothing closer to heaven on earth than marriage when it is good, but it's hell on earth when it goes badly. <laughs> now, Luther was being honest because there are two things that work against good marriage. One is our human nature, and the other is the fact that there are evil forces that hate marriage. And work against any good marriage. In fact, one of the most interesting things about weddings within the church is that there is no place in the ceremony where you'll be asked whether you love each other. Instead, in the vows that you have chosen, you will be asked to make, <coughs> pardon, to make a commitment to love each other, to give and to receive and to share all that's to come until you die. And therefore, as in the passage we read today, you will become one flesh. But the process of growing together as one flesh will continue and there will be forces that work against you. 
I am now at retirement age, and looking back over the years as a pastor, I've seen a lot of marriages. I've seen bad marriages. And I've seen good, amazing, even wonderful marriages. And over those years, I have tried to learn about the habits of people who have good marriages, especially from couples who have had to go through tough times together and couples who lived many years together. And so I'd like to share with you four of the things I've learned. They may seem like simple things, maybe even trivial to you, but these habits are important in creating a continuing joy in marriage. It's like uh, putting siding on a house and you put it on with one relatively small sheet at a time and when you're done, you'll see that, as Mitch's dad would say, vinyl's final. <laughs> <laughs> Or as uh, Samantha's dad would maybe lay one tile at a time to make a floor into a, a work of beauty. And so here are four things I have learned from those good marriages. First, every day, Mitch, every day Mitchell, tell Samantha that you love her. And every day, Samantha, tell Mitchell that you love him. Every day, speak some words of love and encouragement and respect to each other. Now, this may sound pretty easy, and it is easy. After all, couples do it naturally at first. But oddly enough, a few, so few couples do it after they've been married for a while. You already know that most people in the world couldn't care less about you. But you're marrying somebody who does care about you and who you care about. So every day, tell them so. Secondly, every day, do something for the other. Every day, God shows his love by doing many things for you. He provides daily work and food. He provides you with those you love, his care. There are an infinite number of things you could do for each other, and they don't have to be big things. But I've seen that it's in the accumulation of daily little things that makes for big weddings and big marriages. Unfortunately, there is a process that couples fall into. And they fall into it quite honestly. But nevertheless, what happens is they get married, and then once that task is accomplished, they get busy and they focus on their work, their hobbies, their dreams, even their children. And it seems it doesn't take long and they begin to neglect each other. So instead of being the two who have become one that Jesus described and you used from the church, the, I mean the gospel that you chose, they become two singles who just happen to live together. On the other hand, when a husband and wife make this person that God has given them more important than any other earthly thing, they have good marriages. And then, interestingly enough, everything else in life seems to fall into place. And so if every day you do something for each other, then every day what you're doing is making this person more important than your busyness, which is, of course, the way God intended it. Third, always be ready to forgive. God's love is constantly making new starts. And in this season of Lent, we're reminded that God resurrected Jesus even after the forces of evil did their worst. And so forgiveness is very much like resurrection in that it makes fresh starts possible. And so in the same way that God forgives you, forgive each other. And this way, each day becomes new without the burdens left over from yesterday. In fact, one characteristic that's almost universal in bad marriages are the long memories about the hurts and mistakes held against each other. We can get to be kind of like shop vacs that are never emptied. We take in and we hold on to all the dirt, the hurts, the mistakes, the sins against us, but never allow ourselves to be emptied out. Billy Graham's wife was once asked what she thought was most important for a good marriage, and she answered, two forgivers. Moreover, like most pastors, I do more funerals than weddings. And so I'm often reminded of something that you should already know about. And that is that we really don't live all that long in this life. Mitchell, I remember when you were born, and I'm sure it's true for Samantha as well, that over the years you've grown physically, mentally, spiritually, on up to this important day. And as both your parents can probably tell you, the years have passed quickly, and you will find that after today, your lives will continue to pick up speed. And so it's a shame to fill your life with grudges, hurt feelings, and resentments. And so if every day you're ready to forgive, every day can be a new beginning for this gift you have together. 
Fourth, every day, pray for each other. Something I've heard people say many times in many different ways is that when I pray, coincidences happen. When I stop praying, coincidences stop happening. And so pray for each other when things are good and even if you've had a big disagreement. But also at least once a day, pray together. This simple thing may seem hard to do every day, and we're not talking about a complicated prayer, but I have never known in these 40 years as a pastor even one couple who praying together did not find their marriage moving toward deeper understanding, growing, growing inner joy, wider courage and confidence, and a finer, fuller love. Song of Solomon that Deanne read a few moments ago points to the reason for this, and it's clearest in 1 John 4. But the key idea is God is love. The idea is that wherever God is, there is love. And wherever there is real love, God is there too. And so it makes sense that if God is the source of all love, then connecting with God's love in prayer can only strengthen your love for each other. Because all around you, for the rest of your lives, in this world, there will always be hate, anxiety, violence, fear, distrust. You hardly need to watch the news to know this. You can see it at work, in neighbors, and others around you. But you have the opportunity, together with God, to create for each other, and if you're so blessed for your children, a place very different from the world around you. And this will happen if you build God and his kind of love into your marriage. I'd like to leave you with a Bible passage. It's a Bible passage that my dad used in my wedding to Susan. And it's a Bible passage that has become the one I use in all family weddings ever since then. It's a promise to those who center their hope and trust on Jesus. It comes from Matthew chapter 28. It's among Jesus' last words before ascending to the Father. Lo, I am with you always, even to the close of the age. What a wonderful promise from our Savior, that in all things, tough and pleasant, he is there. In the years ahead, there will be good times and bad. There will be dark moments, difficult, sad times, even frustrating, lonely times ahead. But lo, I am with you. There will be happy, joyous, fulfilling times, and again, I am with you. There may be times when each of you will fail the other, perhaps have great self-doubts, Lo, I am with you. When you have successes, experience deep intimacy, times of peace and happiness, lo, I am with you. When the material goods of this world and your health eventually fail you, lo, I am with you. In these years of your youth, if you're blessed with children, as you grow into old age together, when you believe in the words of Jesus Christ, he promises, lo, I'm with you always, even to the close of the age. I ask God's richest blessings on you and your life together. Please rise. And let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, you have created us in love and for love and made our hearts restless until we respond in love to you and to each other. Bless these two who stand before us now. We are thankful for all of the joy they bring to this occasion, as we are grateful for those who have taught them love and nurtured them in love. May they feel your presence resting upon them as they now make their promises to each other. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Please be seated. In the highest and happiest and best moments of your lives, you're beginning to discover a greater love for each other. If in mutual forgiveness for all that has marred the past, and now in renewed faith in each other for the future, by your promise, bind yourselves now to each other as husband and wife. Mitchell and Samantha, have you come here freely and without reservation to give yourselves each other in marriage? Will you love and honor each other as man and wife for the rest of your lives? And so answer, yes, I do. I do. Yes, I do. Okay. Mitchell, repeat after me. Samantha, I take you to be my wife. 
Samantha, I take you to be my wife. From this time forward. From this time forward. To join with you. To join with you. And to share. And to share. All that is to come. All that is to come. To give and to receive. To give and to receive. To speak and to listen. To speak and to listen. To inspire and to respond. To inspire and to respond. And in all circumstances. And in all circumstances. Of our life together. Of our life together. To be loyal to you. To be loyal to you. With my whole life. With my whole life. And with all my being. And with all my being. Mitchell, I take you to be my husband. Mitchell, I take you to be my husband. From this time forward. From this time forward. To join with you. To join with you. And to share. And to share. All that is to come. All that is to come. To give and to receive. To give and to receive. To speak and to listen. To speak and to listen. To inspire and to respond. To inspire and to respond. And in all circumstances. And in all circumstances. Of our life together. Of our life together. To be loyal to you. To be loyal to you. With my whole life. With my whole life. And with all my being. And with all my being. Lord, we ask you to bless these rings which you bless in your name. Grant that those who wear them may always have a deep faith in each other. May they do your will and always live together in peace, goodwill, and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Repeat after me. Receive and wear this ring. Receive and wear this ring. As a symbol. As a symbol. Of my trust and love for you. As my trust and love for you. Receive and wear this ring. Receive and wear this ring. As a symbol. As a symbol. Of my trust and love for you. Of my trust and love for you. You have declared your intention before the church, God, these friends, and these loved ones. May the Lord in his goodness strengthen your consent and fill you with his blessings. The God has joined together that no one could asunder. And now may the Lord God, who created our first parents and established them in marriage, establish and sustain you, that you may find delight in each other and grow in holy love until your life's end. Please rise. And let us pray. Faithful Lord, Father of love, pour down your grace upon Samantha and Mitchell that they may fulfill the vows they have made this day and reflect your steadfast love in their lifelong faithfulness to each other. From your great store of strength, give them power and patience, affection and understanding, courage and love toward you, towards each other, and toward the world that they may continue together in mutual growth according to your will in Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace, to love and to serve the Lord. And now I'd like to introduce to you Mitchell and Samantha Stork.